Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. your host for these adventures in the macabre. Together, we explore out-of-the-ordinary places and share experiences that are unusual, sometimes weird and chilling. We travel unmarked roads in the expectation of encountering the bizarre. It's as if you entered a house long abandoned, dark and forbidding, and for no explainable reason, you see the sudden light of a candle in a far corner of a room. Do you go in? Turn back? You stand, perhaps, in the presence of something supernatural, an order of existence beyond nature, a belief firmly held by Buku Chin, first mate of the tramp steamer the Molly Moran, anchored at Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Oh, yes, Doctor. In my village, we believe in witchcraft and snake worship. Voodoo. And human sacrifice? <laughs> that was long ago. You're an Arawak Indian? Yes, ma'am. But you're an educated man, Book. I have elementary education and what I do not see. Do you believe in the supernatural? In witchcraft and magic? I have seen it work, Doctor. <laughs> mystery drama, Bound East for Haiti, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Mason Adams and Fred Gwynn. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the Sinus Medicines, and Exlax. I'll be back shortly with Act One. If someone conducted a poll and asked the question, do you believe in the supernatural, how many would say yes, no, no? or don't know. I suspect that most persons would say no, even though there is evidence dating from the beginning of civilization of supernatural experiences. Witches invoke the spirits to foretell the future, to bring good luck or bad. It is still practiced today. And some 40 years ago, Dr. Philip Armas said, uh, but let him tell us. See that calabash there? That gourd cut in half? There. There on the small table in the corner of my study. A calabash is the hard-shelled fruit of a tropical American tree. Years ago, they were cut in half, scooped out, and used for wash basins and drinking utensils by sailors aboard tramp steamers which plied their trade around the Caribbean. That one belonged to Buku Chin, an Arawak Indian from Haiti, who was first mate to Captain Pete Johnson of the Molly Moran. Some 40 years ago, I had just completed my Florida medical board examinations, and I badly needed a few weeks rest. So I drifted down to the docks and shipped out as a paying guest. This is wonderful, Captain. Yeah, it's nice to have you aboard. Are you uh, really a doctor? I really am. Pass the exams, and you saw me arrive with my little black bag. Uh, if anyone needs my services... No, no, no. Uh, thanks all the same, Doc. We've been getting along for years with an old first aid kit. Well, I'm not going to think about anything for the next four weeks. Oh, smell that air. And the water. All those shades of blue. You have a wonderful life, Captain Johnson. Suits me. I'll never get rich sailing this old tub, but she's a good boat. Slow, but we get there and we have good times in our parts of call. Two, three days of that, we're glad to be back at sea. And now we're bound east for Haiti. That's right. 
Port-au-Prince. We'll pick up a cargo of coffee and sizzle. Then we'll sail to Georgetown in Exuma, Savannah Lamar in Jamaica, and home. How long will we be in Haiti? A couple of days. Why? Want to explore the island? Yeah, some of it. <laughs> Watch your step. Better speak to Buku. He's an Arawak from Haiti. Knows everything about the island. Uh, Buku, come over here, you old dog. <laughs> Maybe I'll throw you overboard, Captain. <laughs> I'm sure you'd like to every once in a while. Uh, you met the doc. I, I had the pleasure. He wants to see the sights in Port-au-Prince. Will you talk to him? It would be a pleasure. Buku's the best first mate on the Caribbean. He's only got one problem. Uh, you've said hello to her, Doc. Lily. My girl. Yes. A beautiful woman. Yeah, Buku can't take his eyes off her. But you know better, don't you, Buku? Sure, man. <laughs> I have eyes only for the sea. Uh, chow in half an hour. Doctor, uh, you plan to go ashore? No, not tonight. Early in the morning. I have my camera, and the morning light is best for pictures. How about a beer? I laid in an extra supply, seeing as you're a paying guest. Uh, Lily? Sure, Pete. Doctor? Yes, thank you, Miss Lily. <laughs> How about that? Miss Lily, that's great. Dr. Armistead is a gentleman. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. But he's Doc, I'm Pete, and you're Lily. This uh, ain't the Navy. Okay, Doc? Okay, Pete. Good. That's better. Uh, hop along, miss. <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> Isn't she something, Doc? Ah, oh, she's beautiful. I really love her. She loves me, so she says. Why, why the Lord knows, but that's the way it is. I guess I'd better marry her. Maybe when we put in at Savannah Lamar. She comes from there. I approve. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm getting on, 40. I'm ever going to get married. I guess now is the time. And hey, you'll be the best man. All right, that'll be a pleasure. Will you tell her? The night before we dock. And uh, that ought to take care of Buku Chin. You were serious about him? Certainly. He's 32 or 3 and pretty good looking. He's he's always giving Lily the eye. Can't blame him because she's an eyeful. Agreed? I certainly do. Beautiful dark hair and perfect features. And eyes. Big and tawny like a cat's. Well, <laughs> once she's Mrs. Pete Johnson, Buko will lose his steam. Right? She hates him. That must make her uncomfortable. It does. She wants me to get rid of him, but... Uh, See, Buku's an expert first mate. I'd, I'd never fire him. Uh, did you talk with him about Haiti? Yeah, yeah, it was fascinating. All that all, all, all that junk about voodoo and snake worship and magic. He, he's full of it. And he believes it. In the village that he comes from. I know, I know, I know, I know. I've heard it a hundred times. Well, if it makes him happy to believe in superstition, what's the harm? There is not. Someday I'd like to come here for a few weeks and explore the island. There's a, there's a mystery about it. And not just in Haiti. There's mysterious things in small islands all over the Caribbean. Ah, here you are, Lily. For you, Doctor. Thank you. Pete. Thank you, my dear. What uh, took you so long? I uh, had to go back for another beer. Uh, you uh, dropped one? I threw it in Buku's face. The incident was passed over, fortunately. We had dinner, and I retired early, falling asleep looking through my porthole at a sky of dark blue velvet sprinkled with stars I felt I could reach. For the next two days, I explored Port-au-Prince, snapped pictures, and mailed postcards back home. The afternoon of the third day, we weighed anchor and lumbered out of the harbor headed for Jamaica. Have enjoyed the voyage, Doctor? Oh, Lily, yes, yes, very much. Mm -hmm. It is restful. The day is so bright, and then the night, the sky of dark blue that stretches as far as you can see. And on the water, the moon is huge. You'll be home in a few days, Lily. 
My home is here with Pete. He's a good man. He is that. And strong and jolly. Even tonight, when I can tell he does not feel well, he laughs at me, tells me to go on deck and make love to our passenger. What? <laughs> that is just how he talks, Doctor. <laughs> I'm relieved to hear that. Uh, now, you say, you say that he doesn't feel well. It is nothing. Well, perhaps I should see No, him. no, no, he is resting. Pretty soon he will come on deck, and we will watch the sea from the bridge. Who's at the helm now? It's not Buku. No, Umberto. He is from Cuba. Buku, I do not know where he is. You wish to go up to the bridge, Doctor? Yeah, I think not, Lily. Thank you. I'm going to turn in soon and read. Oh. You have your nose in a book all the time. Well, I am going to the bridge. Pete will be up soon. Enjoy yourself. I'll watch the sea a little longer, and I'm going below. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Doc. Oh, oh. Ah, Lily. Take your, your hands off me. I love you, Lily. He will scream. No one will hear you. Pete will come He on. is not well. Pete is sick. Did, Didn't you see that tonight? He is sick and they will never get worse. You talk like a fool. Take your hands off he me. He will die. I'm the first mate. I will be in charge of the Molly Moran. And you will stay with me. Before I stay with you, I jump overboard. You belong to me, Lily. What is written by fate cannot be erased. It is not my fate to belong to you. Who said it was? Some witch doctor. You will see. When Captain dies, you will see. Uh, I know you, Lily. You love the sea. You do not want to return to Canfield. You will stay with Buku. He's going to take care of you. Now, take your hands off me. Kiss me, Lily. You feel me. I, oh. I warned you, oh. Buku. Oh, you got he, he said you, you would die. Oh. Are you okay? Pete. Oh, oh. Don't touch me. But Pete. No. I warn the dog not to touch Lily. Leave him there. When he comes to, he'll, he'll think twice about making another pass at her. Lily, go to go to the cabin. Yes, Pete. Pete, what's that gleaming in the moonlight on your hand? Uh, brass knuckles. You'll you'll stay in line now. The tension when I reflected about it had been there all along, from Freeport to Georgetown and out of Haiti. But it was after we weighed anchor from there that the tension became charged. I hadn't heard the eight bells that marked midnight, but when I was awakened by a tapping at my cabin door, I heard one bell. So it could have been anywhere between 12.30 and 4 a.m. It was Lily. Calm, Doctor. Pete is not well. I said, of course, and I slipped into a robe, picked up my doctor's bag, and a few minutes later, I was sitting next to the captain's bunk. Sorry she uh, woke you up, Doc. Why, quietly. Now, let me get your pulse first. Pete, Buku is... You don't mention his name. Now, open your mouth, Pete. All right. It looks all right. Your forehead's damp. Do you feel chilled? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just cold. I, 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 I don't know. Kind of, kind of weak. Lily, will you bring me a glass of water? Oh, sure. I'll give you a sulfur pill and another in the morning if you don't feel any better. I think you will. It's probably a virus of some kind. Ah, thank you, Lily. Uh, Doc, how much? <laughs> no charge. Take the pill, Pete. Cover up and get a good night's rest. Umberto is at the helm. Do not worry. All oh, this fuss. Now, go to sleep. Okay, Miss Lily. <laughs> uh, how's old Buku? Up and around? Oh, he dragged himself to his cabin. Good. I hope his jaw aches all night long. <laughs> oh, uh, Lily, lock up. And, uh, oh, Doc, <laughs> don't fall overboard <laughs> on your way back to the cabin. Very sick, Doctor. Hmm. Oh, not at all, Lily. Mild upset, nothing more. Buku said he will die. Well, and he knows more than I do, which he doesn't. Now, don't worry, Pete. We'll be all right. Buku knows. How does he know? He knows. Well, I know he's superstitious. Don't tell me that you are, Lily. I have seen things. 
Your medicine won't help Pete. There is other medicine. It is of the mind and the soul. A curse can kill. Buku? He has had a curse put on the captain. You cannot discount magic. Islanders in the West Indies sometimes still practice the kind of magic that affects another person for good or for evil. The voodoo doll still exists. It is a small image of an enemy into which pins are driven, or it is cut up or burned. To a modern doctor, and to most of us, magic is primitive nonsense. Dr. Armistead will find out for us when I return with Act Two. This is Dr. Armstead's story, and he is recapturing it for us. He's a man of 70 now, but what happened during his sea voyage on the tramp steamer, the Marley Moran, is still vivid in his memory. He can recount what he heard and saw. He cannot explain it. That does not make the experience invalid. As a normal young doctor, only 26 at the time, he was a skeptic. After all, he was a man of science. Of course, I didn't believe a word of what Lily said. Buku has put a curse on the captain. Nonsense. A curse? I'm certain that Buku wished Pete Johnson dead. You'd feel the same way if you'd been hit on the jaw with brass knuckles. The man had been hurt and he suffered. I went to my bunk and slept until seven the next morning. I went into Captain Johnson's cabin. The pill did no good, Doctor. Look at him. Hi, Doc. Don't, don't listen to Lily. I'm okay. Uh, here, let me swing out of my bunk. I lie back, Pete. You're weak as a kitten. Just just lie back. Hey, Doc, uh, you want to hold my hand? Oh, don't joke, Pete, please. I am so worried. Won't have that, Lily. Don't want you to worry, babe. <laughs> I've been through worse. Another day I'll get my strength back. I'll be up and around. Hey, you'll see. Doctor? It baffles me. Still no sign of infection. Pulse abnormally slow. It's as if his body has... Has slowed down. You give him a shot? I could, but there's no point to it. I don't know what I'm trying to cure. Uh, I'm sorry, Pete. Whatever's the matter with you is something I didn't learn in medical school. You have that medical book? Yes, I, I know. I know, Lily. I'll search again. But I've got a better idea. We reach Savannah Lamar tomorrow morning. I'll take Pete ashore. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no, no. I'm, I'm not going ashore. I am taking you to a hospital. I know there's one in Montego Bay. Forget it, Doc. No hospital. I'll, I'll, I'll be all right. I'm not leaving the ship. But you are wasting away, Pete. Then let me waste. Don't forget, I'm captain of the ship, and, and my word is law. You persuade him, Lily. Really. He should be in a hospital. I don't want to be responsible. I will take you into the hills, Pete. There is a doctor. No, no, who... no, Lily. None of your mumbo jumbos. Go out and get some air. Take that sad look off your face. You're too pretty to look like that. Let's try another pill, Pete. No, no, Doc. Wouldn't help. No, I gotta sweat this one out alone. I left the cabin and went on deck. It was a beautiful day, and the southwest wind ruffled the blue water. The Molly Moran chugged along like a huge hippo. What Lily had said about Buku made me think. Even though I felt foolish about his curse, I wandered up to the bridge. <laughs> Good morning, Doctor. The night cotton has gone up and the sun has come in. Like the eye of a man. Blink, it's dark. Blink, it's night. He sees in, he sees out, until he sees no more. <laughs> You're in a good mood, Buku. I am happy, man. With the captain lying ill in his bunk? He is still alive. Oh, yes. I expect him to come on deck later this morning. I do not believe you, Doctor. The captain will die. You know that? I am on. I know it. How do you know, Buku? My medicine... Your medicine was good for my injury. And I do not forget your goodness to me, cleaning my cut face and giving me a pill to sleep. But that medicine cannot save the captain. 
Nothing, Count. You know what his illness is? Are they that he will die? Fate will strike him down. Have you called on fate to kill the captain? Ah, uh, the doctor. <laughs> Purposes of the port bow. Buku, when we were two days in Port-au-Prince, did you return to your village? Oh, yes. When we drop anchor at Haiti, I go with things for my people. I tell you about them. You do not believe some of the things I tell you. I didn't at the time. Can one of your tribe put a curse on another person? It has been known. Have you had a curse put on the captain? <laughs> no, no. Fate, that is what killed him. He will not leave Savannah Dama. Hey, you want to handle the helm? I go below for breakfast. It is wonderful to feel a ship under your hands, Doc. Huh? I know. <sighs> All right, Buku. Go below. I'll, I'll take over. You have much to think over, Doctor. I have indeed. I felt helpless. Captain Johnson was a strong man. From what I could determine, there was nothing wrong with him. I was young, of course, and inexperienced. But Johnson's affliction was a mystery. Well, he grew weaker during that day and night. When I awoke the next morning, we had dropped anchor in the vividly clear waters of Savannah Lamar, Jamaica. I wanted once to check on my patient. Lily was sitting next to his bunk. He is worse, Doctor. Uh, we, uh, we make port? Yes, Pete. Uh, you'll like it. Beautiful island, Jamaica. Pete, I must insist you go ashore. There must be a hospital. In Montego Bay. No, 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 there no, 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 no. I, I, I said before, no. Then I will go ashore and bring back... A witch doctor. Oh, for heaven's sake, Lily. In the maroon country, there is a powerful old man. Doc, Doc, tell her no, no. Don't want some dumb hillbilly with his hocus pocus. Don't want him. What harm could it do, Pete? What, Doc? You, you approve? No, I think you need hospital care, but you won't listen, so why not let Lily find this man and bring him aboard? <laughs> People, people would laugh at. Well, you won't have a chance to hear them if you get any worse. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, you go ashore, Lily. Go home. Don't come back. It's over with me. With us. Maybe. Buku's right. I, I, I won't get well. Pete, better go, Lily. I will bring back the man later. He will know what to do. Go see the town, Doc. Find someone to drive you to Montego Bay. Well, I'll stay with you. No, no. I'm tired. Poor Lily. <laughs> Remember, you were going to be the best man at our wedding. I'll check in every hour or so. Oh, well. Go ashore. No, no. I'll just, I'll just watch the loading. Uh, witch doctor. Magic. Uh, you, you don't believe in that junk, do you, Doc? Late that afternoon, Lily returned with a weazened little man of indeterminate age, but who's very old. Wore a threadbare undershirt, faded blue denim trousers. I was barefooted. Pete lay in his bunk. I sat next to him. Lily stood near the witch doctor, who squatted like an old-fashioned tailor in front of the cabin door. <laughs> Ugly devil, ain't he, Doc? Lily, doesn't your friend want to examine Pete? That is what he is doing, Doctor. I see. From 15 feet away. Hey. Hey, why, why didn't he say something rather than just chant? Keep I don't know. Chant? I don't know. He's just, I guess, studying you. Casting a spell. Uh, that's what they do, you know. Well, he ought to break a spell if that's what you're under. Hey, tell him to go away. I'll leave that up to Lily. He gives me the creeps. No! Oh, no! What is it? What is it? What's, what's got into it? Lily! Stay away! Lily, what is it? Why did you cry out? I... I cannot tell you. Why not? You brought him here to help. He knows what is wrong with Pete. Tell me. I cannot. I have to do something. And I don't know how to. I don't know how. What was... What was that all about? I 
having the wildest idea. He seemed to say something to Lily, and she cried out. I'll find out, Pete. I'll be right back. No, Doctor. I will not tell you. I want to help. You cannot. Oh, why can't you confide in me? Pete's very ill. He could die, Lily. He will die. Unless I break this spell. Buku. He had a spell cast on Pete, am I right? Now, do you know how to break it? I will have to. But I don't know how. Tell me. Maybe I'll think of a way. No, Doctor. If I begin to act strange, do not interfere. I don't understand. It is the only way. I must do it. Only I can do it. I must. bewildered. I was also fearful. But what did Lily have to do to break the spell which Buku had cast over the captain? The Molly Moran moved out of the harbor. We had picked up a big shipment of sugar cane and now we were homeward bound. Lily was at the railing watching the receding town. Do not talk to me. Lily, is that part of your acting strange? Just Stay away from me. I'm going to check on Pete if you're there. I won't be there. <sighs> what the devil does she mean by that? It is Buku. Not Umber told it him. I can see. You come to the bridge knowing I am here? Knowing. <laughs> it is a fine warm night, huh? Soft and tender. What are you up to, Lily? I enjoy the voyage out. Many times I have thought about you standing next to me on the bridge of this old tub and looking out to sea. I have thought about that, too. That is lying, because well, you have only to cast your eye on my chin. It has healed. Doc had to stitch me up. You know why. I am sorry, Buku. I? You are right, Buku. You say that because you know that the captain cannot live. It is too late, Lily. You push me off and clawed me. You cannot crawl to me now. I was wrong. I have always noticed you, Buku. I have been afraid. For myself and for you. The captain took me in. And he is a jealous man. You have told him many times to replace me. I have heard you say that. And that is why you are still the first mate. The captain cannot be told what to do. I say, get rid of Buku. He will keep you. Is that not true? Uh. There is logic in what you say, Lily. <laughs> you are not up to some trick. I have no trick. The captain will die before we reach Miami. You are an expert sailor. The company makes you captain. Then the Molly Moran will be yours to sail. This will be your bridge. I will say good night, Buku. What? You wish to stay with the Molly Moran? It has been my life. You wish to be my woman? I have always wished that. How can I believe you? I will bring my things from the captain's cabin to yours tonight, Buku. Good evening, Lily. Why? Lily, Lily, why don't you say hello to the doc? I have come to pack my things. What? Lily, don't you dare leave this cabin. It is a funeral parlor. You are dead, Captain. You will never reach me. What will do, Lily? What's come over you? I said you are not to speak to me. Where are you going? It is none of your business. I'm still captain of the ship, and don't you... I have my things. I go now. I will never see you again. What kind of person are you, Lily? You know the captain intended to marry you and Savannah Lamar. I thought you loved Pete. 
You don't seem to know what that is. I spit in your face. That was... That was the... That was the worst punch in the gut of all, Doc. We don't know very much about Lily, but my impression, yours too, I imagine, is that this beautiful and tender woman loves Captain Johnson. Well, we're wrong, it seems. When Dr. Armstead resumes the voyage from Savannah Lamar to Miami, we'll find out. I'll return shortly with Act Three. What we must not forget, and Dr. Armstead seems to be guilty of forgetting, is that Lily told him that her behavior now might become strange. The shock of her sudden departure from Captain Johnston's cabin and her cruel remarks have convinced the doctor that Lily is not devoted to the captain, that she deceived him, and that now... She has sold herself to Buku Chin. But let the young doctor pick up his story. After Lily left the captain's cabin, I sat with him for an hour. He was pitiful. When he fully realized the truth about Lily's desertion, he called her and Buku every name he knew and some I had never heard of. He was breathing with difficulty when I said goodnight. It was almost 10 o'clock, and honestly, I did not expect to see him alive by morning. Buku was on the bridge. He'd be relieved by Umberto at the next bell. I went up to him. Ah, doctor. In the moonlight, your face is like a thundercloud. You know why, Buku. Ah... It is fate. It's you taking advantage of a dying man to claim his woman. Hey, man, Lily makes the decision. I do not force her. She deceived Peter. She'll deceive you. You know who she is. I do not know, but I can imagine. The captain is still alive. Barely. Your spell has worked. I will, of course, report what you've done to the owner of the ship. He will not believe you. He will make me, captain. Not when he finds out that you murdered a man. Death is a mystery. A mystery is something not understood, so death is not understood. (laughs) I have not murdered the captain. I have not touched him. You invoked some kind of spell on him because you wanted his woman. I do not have such power, doctor. No, doctor. The captain is almost dead. I am now in charge. You are paying passenger. Didi and I will treat you properly for the next two days. Then you go your way, and we go out again to sea. For a half hour, I leaned on the railing and frowned at the sea. Occasionally, I heard a gull, and once I saw some long black object break the water with its back and then slide under it. At last, I turned in. In the morning, I rang a buzzer, and one of the deckhands brought me breakfast. It was early, just shortly after six o'clock. Later, I walked to the captain's cabin, and to my surprise, he was still alive. Uh, Hi, hi, Doc. We'll be in Miami tonight, Pete. Hang on. I'll get you to a hospital, and we'll get you well. I don't don't think I can make it, Doc. That damn buku has done something to me. Some curse. Uh, I've been thinking about it all night long. Wish I knew what that witch doctor told Lily. Uh, I've been thinking about her, too. Forget Lily. I was... I was going to marry her. And forget that. She... She moved in with him, Doc. I don't know. I don't want to see either of them. I had breakfast in my cabin. How about you? You feeling up to some food? No, no, no. Couldn't get it done. Pete, could you hear anything Lily's witch doctor was muttering? No. Oh. A word here or there, maybe. They they, they have a gibberish of their own. They, they run words together. Uh, English, but it ain't English. What words, Pete? Uh, what, that the witch doctor mumbled? Uh, I don't know. Uh, 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 calabash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I heard calabash. Like the wash basin in my cabin. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I got one, too. Well, now, why would he be talking about a calabash? Beats me. What has a calabash got to do with a magic spell? (laughs) 
Doc. You don't really f- believe I'm under some spell, do you? Lily was convinced as soon as you got sick that there was something mysterious about it. And Buku said you're fated to die. Then I got to believing it, and now I don't know what I believe. Now, you hang tight. I'll try. A wireless, I had to have an ambulance at the dock. We'll get you well. And then you'll spend a week with me and my parents, and you'll be as good as new. Thanks, Doc. If, uh, if Lily... Put Lily out of your mind. I, I, I can't. I, I, I miss her, and when I think of her with Buku... Now cut I... it out, Pete. She's out of your life, and so is Buku. Think of them as dead. That's a curse I'd like to invoke on both of them. And have it work. <laughs> Lily, <laughs> you, you are wonderful. You like me now, hey, Ma? I love you. Mm-hmm. I want to marry you, Lily. <laughs> you were like that. <laughs> I want nothing but you, Lily. You will marry me? In my virginity. An Arawak wedding. It is quite wonderful. We will lay over in Port-au-Prince for a week. The honor will say all right. And you will marry me. And sail where you sail, Buku. Uh, Now, I will fill your calabash. And you will wash up, eh? (laughs) I... I cannot believe my good fortune. (laughs) When I return to my village, I will make a sacrifice to fate. (laughs) Come now, wash. I will ring for breakfast. You are the finest woman in the island city. I love you. Here is so... (laughs) I see myself in the water in the calabash. (laughs) Never has Boko Jin been so happy. No, oh, no, oh, you, you have broken my image in the water. Die, you, you devil. You have killed me. Our image has been broken. You are dead, Buku Chin. Doctor, doctor, come right away. Buku is dead. I was on deck, staring blankly at the blue waters when I heard Lily's cry. When I heard a yell that Buku was dead, I ran to my cabin for my bag and hurried forward. The cabin door was open, and there on the floor was Buku. Doctor, look. I have broken the spell. You you killed him? No, 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 no. He, he saw his reflection in the calabash. I broke it up by stirring the water, and he died. What? He dropped dead from, from seeing his image broken? Yes, yes. And now Pete will live and get well. Buku is dead. Dead. Yes, you're absolutely right. <sighs> Something has caused a massive stroke. I pretend hard to Buku that I love him. I will be in his cabin when he finishes on the bridge. Uberto relieves him. Buku comes down to me. He is cautious. Then I, I spend the night with him. I see, and then you wake up. And kill him. It was the witch doctor in Savannah Lama who told me what I had to do. Move in with Buku? How else could I trick him if he does not trust me? Well, what did that witch doctor tell you? In Haiti, Buku had a curse put upon Pete. You remember that first night out? He did not feel well. I guess then that Buku had done something. In his village, they do strange things. Many that no one can understand. So, Pete, he comes under the curse. And and you had to break the curse to save Pete? The witch doctor tells me if Buku sees his image in the water, in the calabash, and I break it, then he will die, eh? Hey, it's right. I really don't believe it. Is not Buku Chin dead? Yes, very. Is not Pete already better? I have no idea. Well, we better find out. It was a miracle. I followed Lily into the captain's cabin as she threw herself at him. He smiled, about his first smile in ten days. He had some color, and I know that this is hard to believe. He managed to sit up in his bunk. 
Lily told him how she had tricked Buku and what she had done. Pete listened in wonder. He was sorry to have lost the first mate, but he was very glad to be alive. Lily left to get him some breakfast. How do you explain all this? I can't, Pete. I'm a medical doctor. I've been trained to fix broken bones and to diagnose diseases. But we're not taught anything about witchcraft and casting spells. But there must be something to it. I was almost dead. And now, Buku Chin is dead. I'm convinced. But if I told a story at home, <laughs> they'd smile at me. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll go on deck and leave the two of you alone. Pete, I am so happy. It's over with. How can I thank you, my darling Lily? For what? I love you, Pete. I did what had to be done. Uh, why did you cry out when the witch doctor talked to you? I think I cannot pretend to love Buku Chin. Yeah. Well, we'll forget about that. We'll forget about the whole thing. When you left my cabin last night, I wanted to die. You will marry me, Pete? As soon as I can stand on my two feet, you bet your life soon. Tonight, we arrive in Miami. And then tomorrow... We will have the preacher come aboard the Molly Moran. I will be Mrs. Captain Pete Johnson. Well, that's the story of what happened bound east for Haiti. It happened just as I have recalled it. As a memento of my month at sea, Pete had given me Buku's calabash. There it is on that small table over there in the corner. I've never filled it with water, of course. I remember what a reflection can lead to. There is Dr. Philip Armstead's testimony. The supernatural includes magic, astrology, palmistry, and numerology. The fact of the unknown intrigues us. I shall be back shortly. What about carrying a rabbit's foot? An amulet? Wearing a good luck ring? You see, here we are, supposedly civilized... And there are those vestiges of an innate suspicion that there may be something to magic after all. Our cast included Mason Adams, Fred Gwynn, Ralph Bell, and E.V. Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.